Hey everybody! To, well, Strangers World 3 here today with another replay cast. We're looking at uh, Randia with a uh, Akifuki in a div with a Shokaku, so we're probably going to be seeing some uh, anti aircraft work this time. <clears throat> uh, this is the second time I'm recording this. I uh, wasn't really happy with the first run, I guess. Not that often I end up doing this, but uh, it, it results in different commentary, I guess. Regardless, Akituki probably running a AA, well, full AA, or a very heavy AA build, the 6.6 kilometers uh, surface detectability range, so uh, no control and expertise on this captain. No, we don't happen to have uh, P uh, Superintendent, you can see on the consumables down there, stocked consumables, except for the damage control party. So only two smokes, two engine boosts, two uh, torpedo reload boosters, and let's see if we can actually get this stupid thing to work. Not always that it does. I hate this game sometimes. <clears throat> but regardless, uh, I'm going to assume that we have uh, BFT, I'm going to assume we have AF, well, we have AFT, I, I know that, 15k main in that range, it's kind of obvious. No AA signal on the ship. But yeah, we have uh, probably manual AA as well. Anyways, we get kind of the, uh, the shitty spawn in a way. We get the central spawn, which means we can't actually tuck ourselves in like uh, behind this island over there to uh, provide AA support. A is turned on. <clears throat> We're kind of in the exposed, actually. The people spawning, the, they can't actually open fire on us. So I would personally probably have turned AA off here, but we do chip a plane, and it uh, looks like he's pulling away with... Um, he actually opened up with a spotting run. I not normally I don't do that. It's I mean in a standard battle it's not that necessary in, in a uh, domination game where capture points are actually important. Yeah, a, a, an opening scout can be nice. Regardless, enemy carrier doesn't look like he wants to take an engagement with our fighter. He knows we're here, and that's kind of the downside. And there we go. We're turning our anti aircraft off now. If we hadn't revealed ourselves to the dive bomber, well, if he'd flown into us, he would have spotted us. But uh, if we, we hadn't revealed ourselves to the dive bomber, there is a chance a fighter could have come in for an engagement. We could have gotten a tag on that. We could have uh, picked up a couple of kills on that for free. But anyways, he's just flown into our AA range again, not noticing that we were in fact heading for this island to uh, plink at his planes. And there you go. We might get one more kill on the way out. If we get lucky, we should. We should. We should. Looks like our ally carrier is going for a uh, fail strafe. That's never going to catch anything. So he just needs to extract. I'll take a torpedo in behind us. Not a bad deal overall. And our carrier has now tagged and disengaged strafe. He's running away, which is the right thing to do. Just need to continue running and re-tag if... Actually, no, he doesn't want to re-tag there. It's a bad place to re-tag. <clears throat> but uh, if we're lucky, we might kill one more plane. I I'm not sure. We do actually get it. So that's uh, pretty normal. Normal on a little bit of high end of luck when it comes to AA kills there. First are spotted. I wouldn't mind clicking at that. It's 19 mil standard armor, so if we have, um, if we happen to have IFAQ, we can actually uh, pen his uh, bow areas with HE. Opening fire, so we're gonna get spotted by the planes if he flies them too close, but then again, our AA is on, so, you know, we're gonna be getting ourselves spotted with the, the planes regardless. Generally, shooting at a Fuso is going to yield the two great results. And you can see there, 500 damage, another 500 damage for 1k. It's horrible. But uh, the Mogami is around. We could actually poke the uh, Mogami with some 10 centimeter shells. Uh, that's actually something we can deal damage to with our AP da shells. Uh, again, not going to yield much, but hey, something something. And shooting at the Gallant over there is really just a massive waste of ammo. There you go, looks like we are going to poke the Mogami with without allied aircraft to spot, without the Mogami having fired. You know, our carrier will have to kind of get close. I would turn AA off right now and get ourselves spotted with the Mogami. We could find ourselves bleeding, but he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't get lucky actually. He gets unlucky. He fires just before the. Um, he, he fires just before the um, the plane circles around, so he didn't actually get to shoot over the island. And when his plane circles around, he gets shot down before his next salvo comes up. So it's a bit bad for him. Regardless, our carrier is attacking on the western side of the map at this point, uh, and we're pretty much going to be uh, mostly pointless over here now. He's going double to beat one up. I, I wouldn't really suggest going after that Artigo. I mean, both destroyers are spotted in the area. I guess we wouldn't spot them at this point. But like, this Artigo is close enough to the Allied team, and they're actually pushing up. That I don't think he's going to last long, and he got bled a lot of damage. I would have just accept the fact that this torpedo bomber squad, uh, this fighter is dead. Pull our torpedo bombers away because our last fighter is actually over here. And there you go, Sharnos explodes the Artigo. We don't even, uh, you know, the Allied carry doesn't even get anything. Strafings are going uh, through now. Focusing on killing the scout plane, it's not going to yield much of a 
problem overall. But there you go. You see, the torpedo ones are heading towards the enemy fighters now, so there's a good chance we're going to get the... And another damaged fighter is heading in there as well. Just accept, cut your losses, accept the fact that that fighter is gone, and uh, just pull away. And there you go. Straight things are going through. Looks like we're, uh, we just got even more stuff uh, killed off. One full wipe now. Mahan shows up, so we've got our own pressing concerns. As we looked like we were heading towards the western side to relocate to provide some support. Shoot a bit late, so we're only going to get one salvo and one full pen for 300. Yeah, damage is damage, so it's not bad. But there you go, our ally carriers has gotten most of uh, the fighters wiped, but at least managed to protect one speed bomber squadron in general. And this is this is not even a very heavy AA setup. I would rather sacrifice the torpedo bomber squadron and the one fighter squadron. And Actually, never mind. Looks like we want to be the one we made it through, but that's not going to get to attack anything up there. It's a waste of effort, and we're going to get the dive bombers wiped on top of our, all of our fighters. But in general, that was just a throwaway of, a, of uh, some strike and throwaway of, I think, seven uh, fighters as well. In general, not the best result. Especially considering that now we don't actually have anyone to spot the Colorado. Nothing is nearby. That uh, that dive bomber that's on the return path should just be asked to come over here, bring the, uh, the fighter over if he wants to as well. Now we need to turn our anti-aircraft off. We do not want to be getting ourselves spotted over here. Turn it off, turn it off, too late. We're going to get spotted. And there you go, AA goes off. We're now spotted. The reason we don't want to keep AA on at this point is because we're basically telling the enemy carrier, oh crap, there's a destroyer there, when, you know, he would have had to fly all the way up to here, and now we just let us slow screen on top of that. And the Colorado knows we're here, so that's just, in general, bad. At this point, the, uh, the Gator is actually going to be spotting these planes for us, so he's not getting himself spotted. He's just spotting the planes for us to engage. New Orleans behind there, the enemy carrier definitely spotted that now as well. And there you go, Colorado gets spotted. We can just go forward and plink him with AP. And for some reason, the Gator decides to open fire, which in my opinion is a bit silly. Maybe we can wipe one squad. I would uh, try to get it, but uh, we don't actually get lucky. So mm, squad makes it home, but the other one is still loitering. Trying to torpedo is a waste of effort. The Colorado knows we're here, so he's just going to sail away. So I would just back on, you know, back in there. And at this point, there's no. Now I wouldn't be sure trying to shoot. Uh, because the planes are here, but it uh, looks like we do open fire, so we're going to get ourselves uh, kind of a, a marker, if you want, for the enemy carrier to go for. But th then and again, it still needs to make sure he attacks fast, and sounds like a lot of planes are dying. But uh, he's not actually going for us, luckily for us. He's going for the gator, and he's committed, so we should stop looking at the planes, start focusing on the enemy fighters, because uh, the stuff over here is not a, a threat. Focusing on the fighters now. Is going to help our allied aircraft carrier make an attacks, and we should shoot at the superstructure upper belt 25mm. At this range, we can easily penetrate 25mm on the Colorado, and there you go, 3.6k damage. That's like, that can be cruiser levels of HE, and we send these out every two, you know, two and a half seconds with our BFT, and some of our shells aren't even missing at this point. So yeah, hitting his upper belt is what you want to do, and now we can actually make a consideration to target his uh, aft and the standard. But focusing the fighters is what we need to do. We need to can well. We need to stop shooting now and turn around the aircraft off because the smoke screen is about to expire. We decide to fire at the last moment, but we fired early enough that the penalty is going to reset. And uh, the airline carrier has already committed the drop. I think it's way too far ahead. Looking at the map, I think it's going to miss. And there you go. It gets shit strafed away. So uh, in the end, all four drop, but failed to get any hits. So well, now that we're going to finish the guy off, and finishing him is the right thing to do. We need to focus the fighters as well. And at this point, uh, just to read out a part of the email. Um, I never know what to do in the beginning in an after 50 game, so I would kind of like some general advice on that. In general, what we did at the start to support the carrier was the right thing. I wouldn't... I would not open fire... Actually, no. 9k? Yeah. I would load HE and shoot this Mahan down. I thought it was like way further away, but the loading HE and shooting in the Mahan is uh, in general a good thing here. But uh, as we we're plink, uh, trying to plink away, and then you go, a bounce that would have done two, 200 damage. That one actually did the, did the damage. Uh, we're under leading at this point, so you know that's he, he's not turning that way, so he's, that salvo's gonna miss. That's aimed a little bit over, and he's gonna turn the other way, so that's gonna miss. But uh, we finally realize that the uh, the secondaries of the Bismarck are giving us an incoming, uh, like an incoming 200 reasons per minute, to 300 reasons per minute to stop shooting, and there we go. We're gonna stop shooting, launch the first, launch us a, a torpedo salvo against him. At this point, oh, engine goes down, but we just need to conceal, stop bleeding the health. The Bismarck shot was uh, pretty. Uh, Unfortunate for him, lucky for us we don't bleed too much, but uh, I would at this point actually run towards the Mahan and away from the Bismarcks because without our concealment expertise, we are going to get ourselves Bismarck spotted at this point, and this is to answer the question that was actually answered in the email, uh, asked in the email, how you should handle the latest stages of games. 
And that's kind of what I'm commenting on. This is definitely not how to do it. We're now pushing a massive salient into the, the enemy's base. We don't have our smoke screen off at the moment. Our land behind us is very low HP. The western flank has collapsed. Uh, we don't have the eastern uh, flank. The Thai, Thai team is re uh, deploying on that side to basically achieve nothing. Getting closer to a base mark. He wants to shoot the Adanta for some reason. No, no, he wants to shoot us, so it's just misread on the turret. We're applying a lead as if he's going to fully turn. So in, in this case, the Bismarck... Uh, and it, the Bismarck's committed suicide. He's basically seen the first salvo of torpedoes going past. He knows that if he, as long as he shoots us properly and uh, doesn't get too close, he can easily get away with this. But um, yeah, the result of that was expected. Anyways, Mahan looks like he's coming back. He wants to focus on the Atlanta right thing to do. If he can get rid of the kill, you know, kill him off. It's just good in general. But uh, if we'd been shooting HE earlier, we would have probably killed this Mahan already, and now we need to spend more time to shoot at him. 170, uh, you know, HE would have done more. At 170, HE would have done more. And there we go. We finally get the kill when he just overangles enough, so there we go. We have a smoke screen up at this point, but what we need to do is to just head back down here, head back to base, or head towards uh, here and head back to base. Staying around here is a complete waste of effort, and let me just stop it right here to read out the email. Um, in the, in this game, I sat behind the big island on all the lines and shot down planes by the division mate for the first few minutes. After that, I thought I found a gap to push the enemy cap, which is why I'm now in the enemy cap, um, while talking the enemy Colorado. But delayed that because I got spotted by the enemy planes. Uh, strangers wanted to comment. Using the smoke there was uh, bad because we could have uh, just turned around the aircraft off, broken away, and never ended up in this very, very horrible situation to begin with. Back to the email. As I thought I was going to the enemy camp after waiting out the enemy attacking run, I was rushed by a base mark and a very low HP Mahan, killing both. Um, another uh, re uh, casting comment here. The base mark, we got lucky to kill. The Mahan committed suicide on us. These two kills, if they were doing it under perfect conditions, would never really have happened. The, the base mark that uh, basically got himself torpedoed, uh, well, it was honestly really, really silly. He just rushed us and like turned broadside like, hey, please torpedo me. So uh, that was uh, really, really bad on him. on him. If he had Hydro up, he would have known what was going on. We didn't even have a smoke screen there, so uh, we just basically lost 15,000 of our health for, realistically speaking, for the intent of winning this game, nothing. Both of the enemy base marks would have been rather out of the game. Our aircraft carrier is now being attacked by both of the destroyers because, well, we pretty much let them get past there. Uh, he kind of let them get past as well, in a way, without proper spotting. The, the Gallant, I'm actually... I'm pretty sure he went, like, you know, he was spotted somewhere up here, I think. He probably went all the way back around. So that's kind of just the uh, overall mm, bit bad awareness of the Allied carrier not keeping track of the enemy destroyers overall. And in the case of the Fubuki, it's, uh, let's see. Fubuki is Yoyo, so that's that. Len. The Gallant's actually got three kills at this point. He's probably wiped out some of the stuff over here and then headed this way, so. Uh, in general, I'd say bad destroyer awareness on the Allied carrier, and now we're not actually able to support him. He's not supporting us because, well, he's currently undergoing some significant mental pressure with two enemy uh, destroyers chasing his face, and he needs to dodge torpedoes. He needs to kill them, and he needs to keep them spotted for the Allied, you know, to deal with as well. So bad situation to be in, you know, kind of to be expected with two destroyers pushing you. But uh, that's kind of what's going to happen if you don't keep track of the enemy destroyers in general. So the right thing for the carrier on you know, to do is just to escort planes on us so that we get some support. We can deal with fighters and make up losses. He doesn't need his fighters down there for his own defense at this point. That is, of course, if he's not too busy trying to dodge torpedoes and whatnot. Anyways, going back to the email. At this point, I decided to smoke up and ask my CV for a plane. I think that's after the, um, that's after the um, attack end. I'm actually not sure, but... Uh, I'm not sure if I should have run and tried to keep myself in the game instead of smoking up here, uh, aka what he's about to do. Especially considering my divmate was pushed by two enemy destroyers, so luckily he barely survived, spoiler alert. Do you know our team coming to his rescue? In the end, my team wins on the points because the only enemy carrier, only the enemy carrier are the Turpets that uh, we can see in the southern end and the Cleveland still are still in the game. Now... I, like I already said, we wanted to be running that way, and the correct decision is to run, like you said in the email, because we're in a salient, and the important thing to remember is, we were four battleships, well, we were four battleships before this guy suicided, to one. And our one is a turpets down there, he's busy, so he's out of the, well, he's not out of the game, he's trying to keep himself, he's trying to keep the carrier in the game, 
This guy that we killed is out of the game. This guy is not even on the same continent as any fighting going on. These guys went down the Delta side of the map and therefore are really not necessarily the brightest, uh, uh, you know, the sharpest tools in the shed. Cleveland is trying to hang on, but, it, I mean, in the end, if, it, if we'd supported our carrier, supported the Western flank, maybe the Western flank wouldn't have collapsed, who knows? Maybe it probably still would have collapsed, I mean, they just suicided through here and died. So, uh, bad push on their end, in general. We even had an AFK battle here, but I'm actually not, not actually sure who that was again. But uh, if we'd been able to deal with the destroyers or pin them down and prevent them from pushing, by just simply being in the vicinity, uh, and, you know, being able to at least keep one flank secure, and that's the important thing, keep a flank secure. We can basically build the ability for carrier to, to make attacks by killing enemy fighters, killing enemy fighters, preventing enemy attacks from getting through, basically 7.2 kilometer area of us, making it very painful for the enemy carrier to play. Especially because we can turn around the aircraft off, use smoke screens and whatnot. And that basically means that if we're here, our friendly carrier can make attacks on the enemy's uh, side without too big uh, of issues. We can kill float plate fighters, we can suppress enemy fighters, and in general they have to use their own anti-aircraft to defend because they can't rely on allied fighters or the, en the enemy carriers to throw away fighters to uh, be able to make attacks. And that's the thing, if you're being the Akituki carrier support player, so you need to keep in mind what your carrier wants and how anti-aircraft works to support your carrier the best. But in this case, we're not able to do either of it, and now we're being forced to... S or we're feeling like we're being forced to smoke. In general, I would have recommended just trying to extract, because we're taking a massive chance right now. Um, this part dispersion isn't the world's best at that range. We're taking a huge chance with the enemy carrier not paying attention. Two options, engine boost reverse or creep forwards and deploy smoke. In this case, we decided to engine boost reverse. In general, and it actually turns out it paid off because the enemy carrier completely missed his drop, but Akifuki is unmaneuverable as all hell. He should have just, uh, you know, like that is that's redundancy at his finest. That is redundant, complete redundancy. One squad here, one squad here, blanket the smoke, prevent us from going forwards, prevent us from reversing, we would have been dead. So if the enemy carrier is watching this, that's where you screwed up. And actually, that's what lost you the game. But um, regardless, we're now really still in a bit of a sticky situation. We need to consider GTFOing at this point, but without our smoke screen, we have no tools to GTFO, so it's in incredibly important that our carrier, who has finally had the destroyer problem dealt with, and we don't actually, we don't pay attention to his squad, so we don't actually, we, we kind of get another allied fighter squadron wiped, but uh, at this point, with allied fighters now being under pressure by that squad and that squad, we need to focus on killing one of these squadrons. We need to just wipe one of them out. It looks like the ally carry goes ahead on strafe, so he's going to go for the tag. And we kill one squad to instantly refocus. Refocus on this squad, that's important, so that he can't pull away. And we do so. He can't pull away, strafe this squad away. We need to do this right now because we need to kill these planes ASAP. And this is, uh, I think our last buff is still in front of us, so we end up, uh, yeah, we reverse that on our last buff. And now the cargo shows up. We wipe the, the, uh, the fighters, but we're guaranteed dead at this point. We're still broadside, focus and launch the torpedoes on the Bismarck, then shoot the cargo, that's the right thing to do over here. We're definitely, we are guaranteed dead, at least try to deal the most amount of damage we potentially can in return. Send it back into our smoke, but too late, we're gone. And there we go, we don't even get the torpedoes off, and the cargo is one strike potential for the allied carrier, so that in the end doesn't really matter. And that's why we should have run. So, uh, correct answer, run. And in a situation like that, in general, if you don't have control of the map, Trying to push the enemy's base is just going to result in you getting killed for no real, no real benefit. They'll just, you know, overwhelm you, kill you, and then they'll, you know, now have, have well, they had numerical advantage already. They're going to have even bigger numerical advantage, and they're going to go in and murder the rest of your stuff with an even bigger numerical advantage. In this case, though, that's not going to happen because the enemy didn't actually have to, like, the enemy team, for all intents and purposes, the enemy team did not have those two base marks. So well, thanks to that, we're actually going to get away with this. And uh, we've also picked up 31 planes before we died. Most, like, I think half of them are fighters. So that's going to help our allied carrier who barely got away from uh, that alive uh, out a lot. But now the allied uh, carrier that did make needs to focus on dealing with the defeat bombers and fighters flying in the wrong direction. Trying to strike right now is not the priority. We can stack our aircraft up because most of them are landing. Stack our planes up and make the attack. So in this case, um, eight enemy torpedo bombers basically get to uh, make an attack for completely free. And that's in general bad, because at this kind of a late stage of the game, we actually want to focus on wiping out his stuff so he doesn't get to, uh, he doesn't get to pick it up again. But he's flying it past the Cleveland, so he's, uh, if the Cleveland has the fence up, there's a very good chance this is actually going to get wiped. And then, you know, we'll just pay attention to the map, we'll see if it gets wiped or not. Even if it doesn't get wiped, it's, uh, and it does get wiped, it's still a, a staggered drop. 
Regardless, enemy fighter squadron plus uh, the uh, floatplay fighters or our torpedo mortars are basically being thrown away right now. So that's two throwaway squads for minimum damage against the enemy base marks. But, uh, oh, never mind, it's, an, it's the almost dead squadron. But, uh, you know, we don't actually commit our fighter to kill that off. And I think that's the right choice to do. But, so, we actually get to two of the planes to extract. And one hit on the base mark, it's not really a useful hit, though, that's the problem. So now I would be trying to keep the fighters somewhat near the, bait, the, the team because the carrier is very low HP, Cleveland's low HP, this enemy carrier has options to make strikes through and we also have the, the uh, planes, if you want, to make strikes against him as well because he only seems to have a two plane fighter squadron left. But at the moment the enemy carrier is cycling, he did get his stuff wiped, he's going to have an aircraft uh, wing available in another minute and a half, he's going to have everything airborne again and flying towards us. We did need to keep that in mind as a little mental note, but at this point I'm guessing our uh, the carrier is going to be under severe mental uh, stress at this point. So uh, it's also later in the game, so uh, judging by that, I wouldn't uh, expect uh, wouldn't expect uh, to be you know fully tracking uh, enemy carriers' uh, cycling times. A bit more focus on attacking the enemy base point. And ooh, he's actually the plane because remember both squads got wiped, and again probably uh, slipped underneath uh, the radar of uh, our ca carrier currently who's maybe cycling planes but uh, if he killed us off uh, it's basically a uh, last enemy strike wings uh, gone or at least the dangerous strike well, actually this helped the uh, the single dive bomber over there if it lands uh, two bombs the carrier is actually going to die but regardless the Bismarck who wasn't a weight turner decides to weight turn these torpedo bombers into the gator torp so uh, okay thanks bye and he's gone but that torpedo bomber squad is making it past our fighters are chasing the dive bomber instead of going to the torpedo bomber. The torpedo bomber is flying past the Cleveland at this point. Uh, you know, I mean, if the Cleveland doesn't have a defensive up, he could actually find himself killing the Cleveland right now. But uh, fighters are being pulled over there to try to intercept that in general. A, uh, the right choice to make there. So uh, he can't actually go in and kill us off as well because, you know, 3.3k health left. One torpedo hit, you know, carrier is gone. So if the enemy carrier at this point is smart, he'll empty the torpedo bombers and fly them back uh, just to get him out of the way because at this point it's going to get caught. Or I mean actually, actually at this point he doesn't need to empty them so we, we can just pull our fighters away and, and uh, deal with the dive bombers behind us because we need we need to deal with something. We, because any of these things come in and attack us we, and tagging is actually the better thing to do here because it's going to be under a lot of anti-air. But the torpedo bombers are coming back, the torpedo bombers are the bigger threat, we need to kill the torpedo bombers, saw the dive bomber, it actually just dropped, uh, uh, although again... Judging, you know, we, we might not have noticed it, so we're going for the torpedo bomber, and he needs to pull that away, otherwise it's just a throwaway squad. In the meantime, the enemy base mark being dead, this torpedo bomber isn't really achieving anything, it kind of should just head up there and try to look for the enemy Kagero. Enemy fighters, he can't do anything with them because of the blob anti aircraft. Cleveland is actually being smart, and without the enemy base mark, we can be wherever we want, because this Kagero really can't achieve anything. We're chasing, we're auto chase, uh, auto attack chasing the enemy's uh, torpedo bomber away, so it's being uh, pulled away from the fight. We're pulling them back. Gator at this point opens fire on the cargo in the smoke screen, probably has a hydro up. We, we should just focus on, on trying to spot that, but uh, Gator's dodged all the torpedoes up now, and the cargo has opened fire, so uh, he's gonna be staying spotted, and we get the kill on that. Fighters pull back to the friendly carrier, but the enemy carrier has uh, likely no more torpedo bomber replacement. Well, we know he has no more because we got everything wiped. Uh, but um, again, the, uh, the little mental note of that probably uh, slipped underneath, uh, uh, sl slipped underneath the radar for our division mate there, who is uh, actually uh, Mitch Auden, who's uh, uh, very active on my Discord server. For those that want to join Discord, feel free to uh, join it. There will be a link in the description. And again, if you want to submit me replays for review, then there will be an email address in the description below for you to submit them to. Now we're committing our fighters to an attack on the enemy carrier, and there you go. He realizes that, so he's going to come in and finish off the allied aircraft carrier. In this kind of a situation, the enemy carrier can't necessarily make proper proper, uh, proper defenses. So in this case, he's actually going for the... Well, you know what? Let's just kill off the, the carrier problem. So in this case, just control A and left click on the enemy carrier because we're dead. Uh, and in this, you know, if you end up in this kind of a situation, just do that. Control click. Uh, control A, select all airborne squadrons, click the enemy carrier, auto drop, because we're never going to do a manual drop on that. So it looks like uh, it looks like everything has actually been ordered. I'll spoiler it for you. Everything's actually been ordered to fly over the enemy Shokaku. But with that, the game is over. One minute left. Uh, we've definitely secured the win. Even if he had full replacements, even if he did uh, click our uh, kill Arcada, even if he did have another torpedo bomber squadron to kill the Turpets, he would never be able to kill uh, to kill the Cleveland. He'd never be able to kill the Turpets with this uh, little amount of time left. And because we sat in the enemy cap for like two minutes total, I think. 
you know, uh, throughout the course of the entire game, that's two minutes of points income from the enemy team that they're not getting. So yeah, if you are in a salient kind of position, you know, and you're being encircled, if you don't have the firepower, the support to sustain an engagement inside the this uh, salient in the enemy side, basically you're going to get annihilated. Is, and that was going to happen because we didn't have tier 8 battle tips remaining. Granted, they didn't have theirs, but we didn't have the western flank. The eastern flank was being pushed. We were being boxed in. And then all of a sudden, we start to head to the enemy's uh, base. So that results in, well, basically us dying. So the right thing to do would have never even headed towards the enemy base at all in the first place. The moment the aircraft came to, to uh, spot us when we were ambushing the enemy Colorado is the moment we should have turned anti-aircraft off. And when we're here, just... A off, head back around, head back towards friendly territory, defend the western side of the map. That side of the map is important. Provide our AA bubble over there, let our carrier work. That is really what would have mattered and made this game a lot easier overall. So yeah, with that, having a look at the post-battle results screen, 76k damage, a lot of that was fed to us by the enemy base mark. Uh, so we got lucky we killed him, and you know, his division mate really wasn't uh, relevant at all. And his, those two Bismarcks in general were not re much, well, they weren't of much relevance to this battle overall. So um, really just highlights that uh, defending the map is really what matters. And the, it's the enemy destroyers that were, uh, granted they were doing, the, pretty much the entire enemy team was doing weird stuff. Uh, so it's kind of a surprise, this game was a massive mess. Four torpedo hits, all four flooded, it doesn't really matter, the base mark went down, 31 planes shot down, once we look at the detailed reports, we will see exactly which planes we killed. One in cap, irrelevant, two kills, uh, was the Mahan and the uh, Bismarck. Let's see, team scores, uh, we're actually on top, despite not having super amounts of uh, damage to be expected with 31 planes shot down. Our carrier died and didn't have a good game overall. Not actually suppressing the enemy destroyers kind of can result in this kind of stuff, especially if, like, you know, the Gallon, he had a very, look, look at that, he had a very good game. Can't go an alright one, he came back and dealt with uh, us. Let's see, but uh, these these two Bismarcks were a 70% irrelevant. We can see that on the scoreboards. It was really just um, this guy that was uh, trying to do something overall. With the Gallant and uh, whatnot trying to make a move. Because even the Fuso, the guy that went down to D, had a reasonably good uh, score at the end. And the aircraft carrier was definitely performing better than our dev mate. Uh, getting off the better strafes. And in general, having his planes where they were needed a little bit better than, than us. And uh, that's the thing about the Akifuki. If we're playing in the carrier support mode, which we are. We don't have IFHE, I believe. so Which is why we've been spamming so much a uh, AP over HE means that uh, it, it can very quickly result in a situation where one of the two are getting screwed. Basically, in this case, I'd say we kind of, uh, you know, we supported our carrier very well, but in, in the beginning and in the late game, but in the middle stage, we, there's just this massive disconnect between us and the carrier, with the carrier doing something on the, uh, on elsewhere on the map, and the Aki, without concealment expertise, especially 6.6 km of concealment, absolutely 100% needs full support from the carrier at all times if you want to do anything offensive because that concealment, the immaneuverability, the slow speed, big size means that we're going to bleed so much health the moment we find ourselves in a bad position and without premium consumables we, well, if we get ourselves fucked if you want, we have no way to unfuck ourselves. And that's pretty much what happened to us. We died because we got ourselves effed and we had no way to NF ourselves. So, uh, you know, that's just kind of uh, unfortunate in the end. So in the end, don't, you know, to give one tip, well, not a tip, just to say one thing about Akithuki plays. Either you really know how to play it and you're really, really good at it, or you suck. It's really polarizing. It's, there's no middle ground in it. It's very difficult to find it because it's a ship that doesn't fit, if you want, the, the, the role, uh, a, a sort of class model or a role model or anything in this game. It's a unique ship. It's AA support, slow with meek torpedoes, 1x4 salvo, you know, horrible speed, guns that are derpy. Well, not derpy, they're, they're accurate, but the, they require you to know and understand exact armor layouts and whatnot to, to fully utilize. It really is a ship that, I wouldn't say requires skill, but knowing how to use the Aki, it just, it, it just has to magically snap for you. If it, if it doesn't snap for you, you just, it, it's hard to explain. Because there's so many small details in how to play the Aki that you need to, um, to comprehend, not just understand, but comprehend at, at a core um, game level 
to be able to fully utilize and to negate the disadvantages and to push the advantages. If you, like, I can say, ah, oh, Akia's good guns, good AA, so what? It doesn't matter if you don't if, if you don't really understand how to, to execute this uh, together with your carrier in a division like this. So that's what I felt th that there was just a disconnect between uh, the, the carrier and our anti-aircraft support. So in the end, we pretty much mostly were just killing planes for the sake of uh, either killing planes or for the sake of trying to live longer and and a chance to get back to uh, safer waters. So yeah, um, that's strategically kind of the the thing to take away from this. Avoid getting yourself uh, into aggressive position without concealment expertise and anarchy. Even with it, you need full support of a carrier. And in that way, you kill his uh, fighters for him. And let's have a look at the little report screen. And this is what I mean. 15 fighters shot down. Shokaku gets 24 fighters total. That's right. 24 fighters total. We shot down like 60% of all of his fighter uh, planes in total. So um, that really does help our allied carrier, and it lets the allied carrier potentially get some strikes in where we are by attacking, you know, basically under the cover of our anti-aircraft and make it difficult for the enemy carrier to, uh, to get his fighters into the game. And if he wants to get fighters into the game, he has to throw them away for a potential strafe, and he only gets one chance. If he misses it, he, well, he, his squad gets wiped, and, well, achieves nothing. So yeah, looking at, looking at the damage, not too important here to be honest, Bismarck killed, he was irrelevant regardless. Mahan, we finished him off, shooting HD in general would have yielded better results. Maybe we could have been lucky to kill them earlier, but we didn't pay attention to the map, we were focusing more on leading and shooting at the Mahan. So we bled, the, basically we, we bled 15k damage to the Bismarck division for free, and that's where they got their XP from. Shooting down the Colorado was a very good thing, but we did use a smoke screen, and with only two smokes and no premium consumables, we really need to think far ahead on how we want to use our smoke screen as a resource. And using it there was fine, there was nothing wrong with it, but it meant that without the smoke, we had no means whatsoever to head towards the enemy base. And if you wanted to head towards the enemy base, the right, like, you could actually have made an argument to just engine boost and reverse towards the enemy base, because that, that way, if we do find ourselves being pressured, we can just mash W and, well, advance rapidly in the opposite direction! So yeah, finally on the cargo, though, that was just desperation at the end. Shooting AP at that, you can see how good the AP DPM is uh, when people brought them. We basically got to shoot them twice, that's two and a half seconds of loading time, and we did 5k damage. That's, that is not bad at all. But yeah, what matters is uh, 15 fighters. These were pretty much all the self-defense kills. The, what matters is uh, 15 fighters for our allied carrier. And we can see that uh, with 37 eight, uh, planes shot down, granted like 12, 13 of them were to anti-aircraft at the end where we uh, basically parked up the uh, the planes on top of it because we failed to get the click off. Maybe maybe a misclick happened, but uh, the div mate uh, in the carrier failed to actually get the, the strike off, so they were just parked on top of the carrier and they were, you know, free kills. Zero XP New Mexico, that's the AFK guy that probably fed this guy a lot of his XP. But you can see Monarch wasn't even existent, and Shano that finished the article didn't achieve anything at all. So, uh, you know, in general, wait, what? Bismarck, Bismarck, Monarch. Oh, I didn't mind the Turpets, so. But our Turpets definitely pulled his weight in this game, though, and he ended up uh, doing a good job. So, yeah. Um, it's like. Commenting on Aki gameplay is difficult, in my opinion. It's, it's incredibly hard to tell you what to do right, what to do wrong, for in general, for, uh, as general rules. It's, I, I can't really do it. Not because I'm not a destroyer player or anything, or not that I don't play the Aki. It's just a ship that is really reliant on the teamwork and coordination between you and a carrier, and it requires both players to properly understand the, uh, both the map situation and whatnot. It, it just, like I said so many times, it just has to magically snap you. If it doesn't, well, hey, you're... You're kind of going to be ending up in this void where either you're not helping your your carrier or the carrier is not helping you, and it's it it kind of ends up with one guy can get a good game or you know and at the at the cost of the other one you know if you're only killing planes and the destroyer in the destroyer the you know the destroyer has a bad game but the carrier has a chance to have a good one, or if the carrier doesn't support the um, you know if the carrier doesn't support the uh, the destroyer and then the uh, the um, destroyer is going to have a bad game and the carrier still you know might not have a good game either or take the opposite situation, the carrier are fully dedicated to supporting the destroyer, so the carrier now has a bad game, and the destroyer has a chance to get a good game, but an Akitoki isn't really the, the destroyer for doing super hard carries, because it doesn't get like good, really good torpedoes, 
doesn't really get good speed, doesn't really get uh, like super good anti-destroyer guns, you're, uh, you're without IFAG, you're fully relying on people broadsiding you to actually deal damage. But then and again, if you have like a gearing or a, a cover that pushes you and they're broadsiding you for a while, your AP, you can smack them for 5k plus AP damage per salvo. And if they stay, it, it is a miniature minotaur in the sense. If anything is at close range and broadside to you, you will DPM them down. Unless it's an armor key, then you won't do anything to it because, you know, armor. But yeah, uh, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this replay cast. I hope you find it some parts of it useful. I find it really difficult to to kind of commentate on this kind of uh, of stuff because it's 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 difficult to understand. And you know, if it's difficult to understand, it must be even harder to explain, right? But yeah, I hope you have, you know find it useful. Hope you actually uh, kind of can get the the answer to the question, or at least some kind of an indication of an answer to your question that you originally sent in. If you want to send in your own replays, email in the description below. Join me on Discord chat with me. Ask me questions about the game and I hope to catch you guys in the next one. Take care and uh, yeah, bye.